I wanted to find out the most profitable methods to make GP in free to play on old school RuneScape. And this is the result of me searching high to low, talking to people in free to play, and trying out many different methods myself. And throughout my journey, I found out you can actually make pretty decent GP in free to play. So, I've compiled the top 50 best money making methods in all of free to play in this one singular video. Making this what I'd like to call the free to play money making bible. And truly creating the one stop guide for everything money making in free to play. And before we jump into it, hit the subscribe button and help us become the number one channel for the community on old school runescape. Now let's begin. The first method we'll look at is stealing bananas at Wyden's food store. You'll need a white apron to be allowed in the back room of his store, and you can acquire one at the fish supply store nearby. Inside, you'll see a crate with a banana on top. You can collect the banana every time it responds, and searching the crate will open a dialogue asking if you want to take a banana. Press 1 and click the crate again. Repeat until your inventory is full, and then walk to the deposit box near the monks of Entrana and deposit your inventory. You can steal from 600 to 700 bananas per hour, making you around 30k GP per hour profit. Next up, buying kebabs in Al Karid. Buying kebabs from Kareem is another easy way of making some profit. Travel to Al Karid where you'll find Kareem's store right next to the bank. Then talk to him, which will open a dialogue. Skip the dialogue by pressing spacebar, and he'll ask you if you want to buy one kebab. Choose the yes please option by pressing two and then press spacebar once again. Repeat this until you fill your inventory and use the bank next to you to deposit the kebabs. You can buy around 1,100 kebabs, which equals 45 to 50K GP per hour. Back to Wyden's food store. This time you'll actually buy stuff instead of stealing. Trade Wyden and check the prices of stuff he has in stock with the prices of the items in the GE. As prices are right now, currently pots of flour and raw meat are the most profit yielding things you can resell. Buy all the flour and raw meat he offers, and then quick hop to a different world and repeat that process. When your inventory is full, go and deposit it at the deposit box near the monks. You might want to walk while your inventory is full, and run on your way back to save more run energy. Doing this per hour can result in 1,000 pots of flour and 300 raw meats. Investing around 20k GP in total, the profit ranges between 50 and 55k GP per hour. Buying Iron Ore this method will require you to have 60 mining to unlock access to the mining guild ladder near the Falador bank. Then, you'll need to find a world where someone is training and selling their iron ore to Hendor. If the stock is above 1000 ores each, it'll cost only 1 GP per ore. If you don't have 60 mining, you can walk the longer route, but the profit won't be nearly as good. You can expect around 1500 ores per hour, which means around 55k GP profit per hour. Collecting beer glass. Back in Alcarid, there's a spot where you can get free beer glass. It's located southeast of the palace in the house where Apprentice is located. Search the eastern shelves to find a beer glass. Keep collecting until your inventory is full and then deposit at the bank nearby. You can expect around 850 beer glasses per hour, which equals to 60k GP profit per hour. Collecting Monk's Ropes. In this next method, we'll be collecting Monk's Ropes tops and bottoms. You'll need 31 prayer to access the area in the monastery, and you'll have to climb the eastern ladder to go to the room with the robes on the table. You have the choice of picking up only the robe top, which is slightly more expensive than the bottom, or just picking up both and then quick hopping to the next world. Repeat this until your inventory is full, and then deposit at the Edgeville Bank. You can collect around 270 robe tops or bottoms, which will result in 75k GP per hour. Buying ale from the Rising Sun Inn. Let's have a cold one. In this method, we'll be buying ales from the Rising Sun Inn in Falador. To start this, click on Kaylee. Next, hold spacebar and go through three dialogue windows. Then you'll be shown a selection of ales. Find out which one is the most profitable by going by the grand exchange prices, then press one, two, or three accordingly to buy the most expensive ale. Press spacebar again to skip the rest of the dialogue and repeat this until your inventory is full and deposit at the Falador West Bank. You can buy around 650 drinks per hour, making 75k GP profit. Collecting Tinder Boxes Another item that can be collected for profit are Tinder Boxes. Go to Draenor Village and enter the wise old man's house. You'll then see a bookshelf with a Tinder Box in it. Go ahead and search it and you'll get a Tinder Box. Once you have it, you'll have to drop it in order to get another. You can highlight tinder boxes on the ground if you're using a client called Runelight so you know how many you have dropped already. And another feature that'll make it easier is setting up shift click drop under the control section in the settings tab. A good tip is to set up your camera so the bookshelf is close to your inventory, enabling you to drop and search quicker. After collecting 28 of them, pick up all the tinder box and deposit them at the bank. 
you can collect around 1300 tinder boxes per hour resulting in 80 to 85k profit per hour buying death runes the next method is about buying death runes at aubrey and varrock you'll need some capital to be able to afford them at first and make sure to check the GE price so you're not buying them for more than they can sell. Aubrey starts with 250 death runes in stock, starting at 180 GP each. Now, as you buy the death runes, the price goes up for every single one that you buy. Buy the amount that's profitable and quick hop to another world that has a higher stock in the shop. The best way that works at the moment is buying 30 death runes per world. You can expect to buy around 8,000 of them total per hour. And at the current rates, you can profit 100k GP per hour. Next up is buying anti-dragon shields. This method will require you to complete the quest Dragon Slayer so you can access Ozaic's store. In order to do this, I decided to use energy potions to make the runs quicker. Each costing around 566 GP for 4 doses, you'll have to equate that into your total profit at the end. Simply fill your inventory up with anti-dragon shields, run to the bank, deposit, and repeat. You can gather up to around 3600 anti-dragon shields per hour. Keeping in mind, it'll take around 80 energy potions, the profit will be about 110k per hour. Collecting Bronze Pickaxes The Ruins of Kandazal update brought another F2P money-making method. You'll need to finish the Below the Ice Mountain quest first, but it has almost no requirements and it's pretty short. After completing Below the Ice Mountain, head to the bank icon on the map. Next to the icon, you'll see a barrel. If you search it, you'll get a bronze pickaxe. Now, it's the same as when you did the tinderbox method. You'll have to drop it to be able to get another one. Repeat this until you have 27 on the ground and then pick them up and deposit it at the bank chest near you. You can gather around 2,200 bronze pickaxes per hour, which will bring you over 115k profit in return. Buying clothes at Vera. Let's take a look at Thessalia's fine clothes store located in the Verox Square. She offers a range of skirts, aprons, and other clothes costing much less than the value they are in the Grand Exchange. It's best to check the current prices and decide which item will bring the most profit, but as of today, I've decided to go for the aprons, red capes, and blue and black skirts. Now make sure to check the prices in the GE for each one of the items and purchase the highest profiting one. You can buy an average of around 1,400 items per hour and the profit I was able to receive buying the items that I selected was 130k GP per hour. Buying fishing supplies. Head to Port Serum and this time we're going to focus on Garant's fishy business. He sells a variety of fishing supplies and after checking the prices in the Grand Exchange, I've decided to buy his small fishing nets and fly fishing rods. Buy 5 of each and quick hop worlds until your inventory is full. Then deposit your full inventory using the deposit box near the Monks of Entrana. You can buy 1,100 supplies per hour, resulting in over 150k GP per hour. Something completely random that a lot of people don't suspect is can buying jugs be profitable? Let's take a look. We'll be trading Fortunado in Draenor Village. He sells empty jug packs and he has 5 of them in stock. Each one of these jug packs contains 100 jugs and can cost anywhere from 140 to 154 GP. You can sell these jugs for 3 GP each or 2 GP each if you want to sell them instantly in the Grand Exchange. Buy 5 packs and quick hop to a different world and you can open them every time you buy them or fill your inventory and open more of them at once. You can get over 160,000 jugs per hour but it might take some time to sell all of them. The profit reaches up to 250k per hour making it one of the best money makers without any requirements except some capital to buy the packs in free to play. Similar to the empty jug packs there's Eye of Newt packs. You'll find them at Betty's Magic Emporium in Port Serum. Buying 5 per world and also buying the black and blue wizard hats while you're there can bring you quite a lot of GP profit. You're able to buy up to 240,000 eyes of newts with a profit of 240k GP per hour if you sell them for 4 GP each. But if you don't mind waiting, you can actually sell the eyes of newts for 5 GP each, which would equal out to a whopping 480,000 GP profit per hour. That's insane. Now for the last money maker in the collecting category, this time we're in Remington. We'll go to Romix Crafty Supplies where he sells a variety of jewelry molds, threads, and needles. We'll be focusing mainly on the threads where you can buy 100 of them in each world and then quick hop into another world and get another supply. I've decided to get some needles and molds as well while we're here and you can expect to get around 26,000 threads per hour. Now each thread costs 1 GP each in the store but sell for a whopping 9 to 10 GP each in the Grand Exchange. 
The final profit you can reach and expect to get is 340,000 GP per hour. Making this and buying Eye of Newts the best collecting free to play money making methods in the entire game. Who knew you can make so much GP having basically no requirements at all in free to play. But as crazy as this might sound, we are just getting started. Welcome to the processing segment of this video. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, do so now. Things are about to get intense. Tanning hard leather. Tanning hard leather is a very known method. In order to do it, you need cowhide and some GP. The best place to tan your hides is at Ellis's in Al Karid. The quickest way is to click on the cowhide and use it on Ellis. That'll open a window where you can choose between soft and hard leather. It's recommended to invest in energy potions. That way you can tan around 2,800 hides per hour, while walking results in around 2,000 per hour. Checking the prices at the GE is crucial, and during my attempt, the prices were actually not profitable. So in the end, with those prices, you'd be losing around 10K every hour. Filling water containers. Next on the list is filling water containers. Instead of buying jugs at the GE, I decided to get some at Draenor Village to save 25% of the total cost. Then I moved to Falador West Bank as there is a well nearby. Just simply fill your inventory with empty jugs and use one on the well. The rest will fill up automatically. You can fill over 3,000 of them per hour, which means over 57,000 GP per hour profit. Making pizza bases. Let's take a look at pizza bases now. You'll need 35 cooking to make them, and they're made by using a pot of flour on a container of water. The best way to make these is to actually gather your jugs of water yourself to save a little bit of money. Once you have the supplies, withdraw nine of each and use them together. Press three to make the pizza base. Once your inventory is completed, Deposit and repeat the process. You'll end up with pizza bases and empty jugs and pots that you can also sell. You can expect to average around 2,400 pizza bases per hour, resulting in over 90,000 GP per hour profit. Making pastry dough. Pastry dough has no requirements and it's made the same way pizzas are. Same with pizzas, you can make around 2,400 of them per hour, resulting in a higher profit, which is 95K GP per hour. Making pie shells. In order to make pie shells, you'll need a pastry dough and a pie dish. This method is much less intense as you can make 14 per inventory rather than the usual nine while making doughs. There's absolutely no skill requirements and you can expect to make around 2,400 of them per hour. The prices at this time I was doing this method meant that it actually profited us over 140,000 GP profit per hour, but it can be much more if the margin is bigger. Making dice. This next method, we'll take a look at dice. There's three options that you can make. Blue, yellow, or red die. At this time of making this video, I chose the red and yellow dies because they were the most profitable. To make a yellow die, you'll need two onions. To make a blue die, you'll need two woad leaves. And to make one red die, you'll need three red berries. If you decide on yellow dies, then be careful not to eat the onions as it's fairly easy to misclick them. You also have to use the ingredient on Aggie who's located in Draenor Village. Using it on her will make it quicker than going through the entire dialogue. Each die costs five coins to make, so you'll need to carry some GP with you when you go. I was also using energy potions to make it faster, which means that you can expect around 1,600 dies per hour using a total of 48 energy potions. The final profit I was able to achieve was a whopping 170,000 GP per hour, making it one of the best processing money makers out there. Making uncooked apple pies. And for our last processing money making method, it'll require you to have 30 cooking. We'll be making uncooked apple pies. And to make one, you'll need a cooking apple and a pie shell. Withdraw 14 of each of them and use them together. After you're finished, deposit and repeat. You can expect to make around 2,300 to 2,400 of them per hour. Checking the prices at the Grand Exchange at first is always recommended. At the time of doing this, my profit equaled over 175,000 GP per hour, making it the most profitable processing money-making method in free-to-play. Bringing us straight into our next money-making segment, selling. Selling arrows. An entire category to make money in old school RuneScape is reselling, where you buy something at the Grand Exchange, then resell it at the store for a higher price. We'll start by taking a look at Brian's archery supplies in Remington. Specifically, we'll look at the Adamant Arrows, which cost around 26 GP each, but can be sold for 52 GP each. Keep in mind the price differentiates depending on the stock, but what I've decided to do is sell 15 arrows per world and then quick hop to a new one. 
You'll be able to sell around 5,000 arrows per hour, which would make you over 70,000 GP per hour at the current rates. Selling bows. The next method on my list is very similar, and that's selling bows to Brian's Archery Supplies in Remington, the same location where we sold the arrows. One maple longbow cost me 242 GP, and it can be sold for 416 GP at the store. Bring some GP, along with noted bows, and then fill the rest of your inventory up with unnoted bows. I've decided to sell five at a time and then hop to a new world. Once your inventory is empty, use your unnoted bows on files located in the general store nearby. He'll unnote your bows for a small fee. You can expect to sell around 1,500 bows per hour, which can result in a profit exceeding 200,000 GP per hour. Selling arrows and bows. Last but not least is selling both arrows and bows. Bring GP, noted bows, and adamant arrows in one inventory. Then combine the two previous methods together. Doing this, I was able to profit over 250,000 GP per hour. Selling teleport cards. You may know about the daily activities in members, but did you know that there was a daily activity in free to play as well? Every day you can buy up to 100 teleport cards from Diango's Toy Star located in Draenor for 150 GP each. The stock replenishes very quickly, so it might be worth waiting a few seconds before buying a new one. That way you can buy it at the lowest price. After you've purchased 100, you can simply sell them at the GE, making an easy 10,000 GP every single day. It takes roughly two minutes to buy 100 of them, so the profit per hour reaches up to 300,000 GP. So in the long run, it's totally worth spending the two minutes per day buying the teleportation cards. Selling play buddies at Horvick. Now onto the last reselling method. You probably know about Horvick's armor shop in Varrock. There, he'll buy bronze to mithril chain bodies and plate bodies. Checking the grand exchange price is a must if you decide to do this method. Simply find out which ones are the most profitable for now, and then place your buy order in the grand exchange. There's a 125 buy limit on each, so to supply enough for an hour, you'll have to either buy them from other players, or let your offer sit for a while. In this instance, I've decided to go for steel chain bodies, plate bodies, and mithril plate bodies. I would sell five of each and then hop to a new world. Selling three different items per world means you can sell up to 1,500 of each per hour. This method requires some capital so you can buy all the items, but the profits are insane. And at the time of doing this, I was achieving over 800,000 GP per hour. That's on par with many of the pay to play money making methods there are in members. Paving the way for the next segment, cooking. Cooking raw swordfish. Now that we're done with processing, reselling, and collecting categories, let's start with cooking. And we're gonna find out how much we can profit off it. Let's try raw swordfish first, requiring 45 cooking, but I recommend 75 cooking so you stop burning so many swordfish. You can cook around 1200 of any fish per hour, and the best place to cook in free to play is in Al Karit. At the current rate, you can expect to make around 20,000 GP profit per hour, but that's not the best thing about this method. You'll also be gaining 168,000 XP per hour to your cooking level. Cooking raw anchovies. Next on our list, raw anchovies. Having no cooking requirement, but I recommend having 20 or above cooking to start this. You can expect to gain around 36,000 XP per hour and make over 30,000 GP profit per hour by cooking them. Cooking raw salmon. Another free to play fish is raw salmon. Requiring 25 cooking, but I recommend 50 plus. The experience per hour can reach over 100,000, and the profit at the current rate is over 35,000 GP per hour. Cooking raw tuna. Next up are raw tunas, requiring 30 cooking, but 55 plus is recommended. Cooking them offers up to 120,000 experience per hour and over 70,000 GP profit per hour, which is twice as much profit than the salmon. Cooking raw lobster. Last from the fishing family is a shellfish called raw lobster. You'll need 40 cooking, but 65 plus is highly recommended. With XP rates ranging up to 144k per hour and profit being over 75,000 GP per hour, this is a pretty good method. Cooking plain pizzas. In our last cooking method, we'll be making and cooking plain pizzas. To make them, you'll need pizza bases, tomatoes, and cheese. With a requirement of at least 35 cooking, withdraw 9 of each and combine them together. First using tomatoes and pizza base together, and then the cheese at the end. You'll end up with uncooked pizzas that are ready to be cooked. I suggest using the Alcarid range. As I mentioned before, it's the best place to cook in free-to-play. You can expect to make and cook around 570 plain pizzas per hour, 
yielding around 70,000 cooking experience and close to 150,000 GP profit per hour. Crafting Gold Jewelry. Now we're going to take a look at crafting, specifically jewelry making. We'll go through five methods and it's best to check the price for rings, necklaces, and amulets to see and decide which one is the most profitable. Starting with the gold ring requiring five crafting, the necklace requiring six crafting, and the amulet requiring eight crafting. To make any of these, you need a gold bar and a mold. Then once you're ready with those supplies, use your gold bar on a furnace and choose the item of your liking. The shortest furnace to the bank ratio is in Edgeville. I've decided to make golden necklaces so you can expect to make around 1500 golden jewelry per hour. And in this case, necklaces will gain you around 30,000 XP per hour in crafting and the profit I was able to reach was over 60k per hour. Next up is diamond jewelry, requiring 43 crafting for the diamond ring, 56 for the diamond necklace and 70 for the diamond amulet. To make any of them, it requires a gold bar and one diamond. You will withdraw 13 of each and keep the mold in your inventory. The gems in general can be expensive, so making money with crafting requires some sort of capital to start, but you can resell once you're finished making them and just buy more. I've once again decided to make necklaces, and you can make over 1,100 of them per hour, yielding 100,000 experience in crafting and 90k GP profit. Crafting Ruby Jewelry Ruby Jewelry requires 34 crafting for the ring, 40 for the necklace, and 50 for the amulet. I also made ruby necklaces this time as well. With up to 83k experience per hour and 140,000 GP profit per hour, ruby jewelry is a pretty good method. Crafting Sapphire Jewelry Sapphire Jewelry requires 20 crafting for the ring, 22 for the necklace, and 24 for the amulet. This time I was making sapphire rings, each giving me 40 experience, which equals to 44,000 experience per hour. The profit making sapphire jewelry was higher than diamonds and rubies at approximately 140,000 GP per hour. Crafting Emerald Jewelry The fifth and last crafting method is making emerald jewelry. The emerald ring requires 27 crafting, the necklace 29 crafting, and the amulet 31 crafting. I was surprised to see such big margins and decided to make unstring amulets. With over 77,000 XP per hour, this method offers an unbelievable 280,000 GP per hour. Making it one of my most favorite free to play money makers giving that it's nice crafting experience and GP at the same exact time. Fishing. Fishing tuna and swordfish. This next category on my list is fishing. And while recording this, I have to mention I felt very nostalgic. We'll start by harpooning tunas and swordfish. To reach the fishing spot, you'll have to take a charter from Port Sarum to Musa Point in Karamja, and then run east and north until you reach the fishing icon on the map. Remember, it'll cost you 30 GP to get from Port Sarum to Karamja, so you'll need to bring GP with you as well. Depositing your fish is now easier than it has ever been in the past. There's a deposit box near the Monks of Entrana, as I mentioned earlier in this guide, making banking your fish faster and easier than ever before. You can expect to catch around 90 swordfish and 170 tunas per hour, giving you around 22k experience at higher fishing levels. The profit I was able to achieve was 26k GP per hour. Fishing Lobsters Another fishing method is catching lobsters. Everything is the same except the fishing tool being used, which is a lobster pot instead of a harpoon. I was able to catch around 240 lobsters per hour, gaining the same 22k experience as the previous method and profiting close to 27,000 GP per hour. Mining. Mining gold ore. Another skill that can be very profitable is mining. The first ore we're going to look at mining is gold. You'll need 40 mining and 40 crafting, to get access to the crafting guild where you can find seven gold rocks. The nearest bank to these ores is Falador East Bank. To enter the crafting guild, you'll need to wear a brown apron. If you're faster than the rocks replenish, you might consider hopping worlds. You can expect to mine around 240 gold ores per hour, which equals to a bit over 15,000 mining experience, and the profit you'll gain is 40k GP per hour, which isn't that bad for mining. Mining coal. To mine coal, it requires 35 mining but 41 and above is recommended so you can use a rune pickaxe. The best spot after the mining guild that requires 60 mining is the Dorvern mine under Falador. If you happen to have a combat level that's less than 65, you might get attacked by the two king scorpions that roam around the area. Simply fill your inventory and deposit them at the east bank. You can mine around 300 coal per hour, which equals 15,000 mining experience and a profit of 43k GP per hour. Mining Adamant Ore. Next on my list is mining adamant ore. 
Requiring 70 mining, you can find two rocks in the free to play section of the mining guild. It takes a while for them to replenish, so you'll have to hop worlds as well. After your inventory is full, you can use the ladder west from you and deposit them at the bank. You can expect a bit over 100 ores per hour, resulting in close to 10,000 XP in mining, which isn't that much, but the profit, however, is over 100,000 GP per hour. Mining Clay Last in our mining category is clay. There is no mining requirement, but 41 plus is recommended, so you can use a rune pickaxe. The best spot to mine clay in free-to-play is just south of Varrock near the Champions Guild. You'll find two clay rocks there. Stand in between them and fill your inventory. You don't need to hop worlds as the clay responds very fast. You can mine up to 800 clay per hour, which equals 4,000 mining experience and a pretty decent 120,000 GP per hour, making it the most profitable method to mine in free-to-play. Smithing. Smelting silver bars. Smithing has been around for a very long time in old school RuneScape. Let's take a look at three methods I found to be a very viable set of money makers. We'll start with smelting silver bars. They're made simply by smelting silver ore and require 20 smithing to do so. They grant 13.7 experience per bar. You'll be smelting silver at the Edgewell Furnace as it's the best place to smelt in free to play. You can smelt close to 1,000 bars per hour, which will grant you a bit over 13,000 experience per hour in smithing and a profit of 38k per hour. Smelting Iron Bars Requiring 15 smithing and granting 12.5 experience per bar, smelting iron bars have a 50% success rate, but that could be changed by wearing a ring of forging. The ring of forging holds 140 charges and crumbles to dust after they're all used. The price is usually around 1k per ring, so it's worth using them. You'll go through a total of about 7 of them per hour. Similar as silver bars, you can make close to 1,000 iron bars every hour, which means 12.5k experience in smithing and the profit I was able to achieve was over 60k GP per hour. Smelting Bronze Bars Now the last smithing method on this list is smelting bronze bars. It's part of Tutorial Island, so I don't think it needs much introduction. You'll need copper and tin ores. Withdraw 14 of each ore and then smelt them into bronze bars. You could smelt up to 800 of them per hour, gaining nearly 5,000 smithing experience with a profit of almost 100k GP per hour. Woodcutting. Cutting you lux. So with two out of 50 free to play methods left, we'll be covering woodcutting. The first one that I want to take a look at is cutting you love. It requires at least 60 wood cutting, but I recommend you get 80 plus before you start cutting you so you can get a decent amount of them. Cutting you logs is a very common free to play money maker, so it can be heavily botted, but you should be able to find free worlds. The best spot with the most trees is nearby the Grand Exchange north of the Varrock Castle. If both trees are cut, then it's worth changing the world as the respawn for a U tree takes around one minute. You can expect to get around 230 logs at higher levels, giving you 40,000 wood cutting experience per hour and a profit of 55k GP. And now, the final free to play method on my list cutting oak logs. Cutting oak logs requires 15 wood cutting, although a higher level is recommended to get better rates. The best spot to get oak logs in free to play is probably Draenor Village, right next to the bank. You can cut up to 840 logs per hour at higher woodcutting levels, which will grant you over 30,000 woodcutting experience. The price fluctuates a lot on oak logs, but I was able to make over 65,000 GP per hour doing this method. And that finishes off the final of all 50 free-to-play money-making methods on this list.